Let's find out what's inside this wound management system pump. Recently, I had a family member come home after hip surgery with a fancy tube attached to an airtight bandage and a special electronic box in a pouch to wear around her neck. The bandage and device would stay on for 7 to 10 days. No changing the dressings. Was this drainage, a vacuum pump to keep the wound sterile, or something else? When the doctor told us that it was disposable and to simply throw it out when it started beeping in 7 to 10 days, I knew that wasn't going to happen. I would of course have to find out what's inside the unit and what makes it work. Alright, time for a disclaimer. Let me start with, I am not a medical professional and I am not offering medical advice. Zero zilch. I simply want to know what's inside this unit. Your medical stuff should be handled by you and your doctor. The unit we got is the Preventa Plus Incision Management System. Looks like a model number 125, and I'm sure there are many others on the market. It's supposed to be a negative pressure wound therapy, or also called a wound vac. From an internet search, I see it's supposed to do the following things. Suction to a wound that helps it heal faster with less scarring. It elongates and deforms the cells at the base of the wound. Helps the cells release granulation tissue. Not sure what that is. Again, I'm not a medical professional. Cells get squeezed and help the wound seal up quickly. And then contraction of the wound bed to make it narrower and shorter. And to me, all those sound like pretty good things. Modern medicine is best. All right, uh, let's begin the tear down here. So first step, let's turn it on and see how this thing functions. Now this is used. Oh, you can hear a pump. It's definitely a uh, vacuum pump of some kind. Now I know uh, in our situation it would turn on every couple hours and apply a little bit of pressure. So this unit is not designed to continuously pump, but instead monitor and then pump uh, every once in a while when the pressure gets low. Hold that button down. Let's turn it off. There we go. Pretty cool. All right. So basically, it's a sophisticated vacuum pump. I know if uh, it continues to run for too long, it'll give you an alarm, and you got to call somebody out to help seal it up. They give you a bunch of spare replacement tape as well. Let's take a look. Just standard batteries. Well, they're they're Energizer lithium batteries. At the end, I'll run a current test on this, and then we'll find out how long uh, it theoretically can run on a set of these batteries. But at least seven to ten days, right? Let's see if I can get this open here. I know this is kind of the vacuum chamber, so I'm going to assume if you had drainage, it would fill up into here. And I believe the pump also monitors for that too, if it gets too full. Ah, well, I think you can take it apart. I mean. I can't imagine designing this without the ability to, um, oh, there we go. Got it. So that is the chamber that holds fluids, if there are any. In this case, it was used for seven days with zero fluids coming out. So surgeon apparently was pretty good at sealing it up. There's also some kind of pouch in the middle. I'm assuming it's in plastic, but I'm assuming it's like some sort of desiccant or something to absorb liquids so it doesn't slosh around. I don't know. Turn it on without the uh, chamber in there. Oh, it does turn on. Look at that. So, yep, there you go. That's the vacuum side. Though there's a couple different ports in there. Gotta hold it for like five, seven seconds to turn it on or off, which is good. Because you definitely, uh, when it's in use, you definitely don't want to mess with it. All right, let's take the batteries out. And let's look for some screws here. See if there's any screws. A lot of times screws are underneath the battery compartment, underneath the batteries. So those are nice Energizer Lithiums, by the way, top dollar. Of course, they charge about $500 USD for this unit, uh, maybe more to insurance. I don't know for a disposable unit. It's, uh, it's a lot of money, but I can understand why they don't want to reuse it. Let's just start out by seeing how good these batteries are after seven days. Brand new battery, 1.82, 1.83 volts, if you're rounding up. Let's just take a look at the voltage on these after a week of running, 1.75. Oh wow, surprisingly good. Even for a lithium, they do run a little higher voltage, but surprisingly for a whole seven days of running this pump assembly, um, we're still just running at 1.75 volts. So very, very good. Um, I don't have a table in front of me, but we can maybe take a look at that. 
and uh, see approximately the percentage of life left in these batteries. All right, let's see if we can crack this case open. All right, let's see if we can figure out how to get in here to see what's inside. I don't think you peel that rubber off. I kind of see a little spot in there on the, the right side. You can see those plastic clips coming. This whole thing might just be clipped together. That's always the trick. Oh, look at that. Look at that. It's coming apart. I don't see any, I don't see or feel any screws in here holding me back. Whoa. Dang. That was easy. Okay. So this is what's inside your Preventa Plus, your wound management system if you have one. So we'll start on the back side. There's a speaker here of some kind. That's what's making your beeps. And I know that because it says SPK1, so we know that's the speaker. And there's a little push through button and a light pipe for the LEDs to shine through. That's the actual switch. So the case button pushes on that switch that's mounted on the, uh, we'll call it the motherboard. There's your pump and it pumps right into there and it creates a vacuum. And then on this side is some sort of sensor. I don't know if you can see that, but I think it says, you know, some sort of U device listed as a U, which is typically a um, integrated circuit of some type. So honestly, when I was looking at, uh, if you look at one of my older videos where, see if I can get this, this board out here too, this little pump assembly, looks like it should just come right out. If you're looking at my air purifier, it had a lot of complexity to it as well, but they were charging like $35 for it. This thing's going through for at least 500, but it is medical grade, right? And it has to meet a lot of medical, you know, um, qualifications, certifications to do the right thing. You can't have a wound pump all of a sudden go crazy on your wound. So even though it may only be, we'll say $35 of parts, Ah, look at that. The pump assembly just pops right out. So in this state, let's um, put some batteries back in it and see if it still functions and what happens to that little pump assembly just dangling from the wires. Okay, we'll uh, push the power button on. It's a tiny little button, surface mount. Hold that for the five to 10 seconds. I see the lights coming on. There goes the pump. I don't know if you can see that, but the uh, pump literally spins a little doohickey that hits a diaphragm under that little black box there. So that's interesting. So we're making progress here, but that's actually what creates the vacuum pump. All right, see that LED on? Normally shines through the light pipe, and uh, I'm gonna push this button and turn it off. I don't think it's designed to really run at full speed like that forever. Okay, it's off. Uh, so let's see if we can get a little better view of that diaphragm in the pump here. Sorry if my angles are a little off here, but if you see, it just literally pushes that black box at the bottom. It's just got a little rubber diaphragm on the top. You can actually push it down, up and down with a pencil, and then the motor spins this oblonged wheel, which I'm sure is really hard to design so it doesn't cut a hole in that little rubber diaphragm and then it kind of spins it properly and then just creates a vacuum and that's literally kind of at the core of this entire thing without any of the safety checks or that little uh, doohickey there oh, sorry I covered that with the thing that little sensor doohickey there without all of that circuitry and stuff it's just a pump so theoretically you could just run it as a um, very low-end pump continuously but I think it would annoy you and uh, probably not have any of the safety or safeguards in it as well. Let's see if I can get this motherboard off the case. I don't see any screws anywhere, but I see these two tabs, the battery minus and the battery plus. And it looks like it's soldered on after the fact. That's not a wave soldering job. That's kind of a hand soldering job. So it's kind of an interesting, nice um, screwless design. And I appreciate that. And it looks like the tabs that hold the batteries in 
uh, also hold the motherboard onto the case. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so I got my soldering iron here. We're gonna just try to uh, solder wick off those tabs and pull the motherboard off and see what's going on. Wait for it to heat up a little. That's Fahrenheit, by the way, if you can barely see that display, about 400 degrees, 420 degrees. So gotta get up there in the 750 range, 700 range, depending on the type of solder you're using. All right, we'll just apply some wick here. There's actually a lot of solder on those tabs, so they're definitely somewhat in a, you know, hand assembling this last component here. It's definitely, it doesn't look automated, but fairly clean at the end of it. All right, we'll just wick this uh, other tab, the battery negative terminal here, and uh, see if that's enough that we can pry it apart. Okay, let's see if this pries up after the wicking. It does not, so that sometimes happens um, that I can't get the either of these sides to move here. Give it a little more pressure here. I don't know if there's components on the back side, so we'll try to do our best to not wedge in too far on the back and see if we can get this to pry up. Maybe there is a screw or a clip somewhere else. I don't actually know yet, so try a different wedge tool. So yeah, even though I uh, wicked those pretty clean, um, I'm still unable to pull that up. Even while applying heat uh, to the tab at the same time, just in case there's something stuck between the uh, motherboard and the tab. Let's see if we can figure this out. We've got two tabs. I do see those white tabs on the top pushing through the, the motherboard, but I don't think those I think those are guide pins. They don't look like they have any clips on them. And there's definitely no screws in this design. Oh, that tab there and that tab there probably just it could be actually be a clip. Worst case is it's got a clip on the top side so that it pushes through clips in and then gets soldered later as opposed to just being solder held in. The actual contact itself could have a clip built into it. But let's heat that up again. See if I can get enough heat on there to pry that. Sometimes these things don't come apart quite as uh, anticipated. But we'll get there. This thing's coming apart one way or another. But my goal when I take things apart is always to uh, be able to put them back together again too. So if you've done a good job taking something apart and then you can get it back together working, then uh, You've kind of mastered that art. If you just cut it in half, like I've done with other things, um, then that's kind of a, I always view that as a little bit of a fail, but there's a lot of stuff that's not designed to be taken apart again. All right, so what I'm gonna try here is, I took all the solder off, but there was just enough left, but uh, it's not wet enough to transfer heat. So I'm just putting a little, oh, there we go. Look at that. I just wet it down a little bit with a little bit of solder just to make sure the heat gets transferred to the board and the, the connector. And look at that, done. Hey, if you um, like this kind of content, please make sure to like and subscribe and please add comments down below. Um, all of that helps me uh, grow this channel so I can keep doing this. Okay, so we have the um, motherboard liberated. We see that U6 there. I think I said U1 earlier, but it's actually U6. So it's some sort of sensor, some sort of vacuum sensor thing. And it plugs into the top of that case in that purple hole there. So it's on the other side of where the vacuum pump is. So it's probably detecting that there's vacuum, when to turn the pump on, when to turn it off, uh, if it gets full of uh, fluids. Ugh. But uh, it ultimately connects in via these tiny little holes in the plastic little reservoir here. And I think that reservoir is designed to be replaceable. So like if you were having fluid drainage, um, they would just come and disconnect the hose uh, and then replace this receptacle, but leave the pump alone um, while you were uh, under treatment. But in this case, um, uh, there was no fluids coming out. So again, the surgeon did a fantastic job of uh, making a nice tight wound. What was amazing, the complexity of these things for uh, such a simple pump. I mean, it comes down to a little motor and a little wheel spinning that does most of the job. And then they have this complicated board here. 
they have this large integrated circuit, which is probably a microcontroller. So this thing is programmed. It's not just an electronic device. Somebody had to write code that doesn't suck, um, so that it doesn't fail on you. Um, so a lot of testing involved in that. I'm sure software development is uh, a little bit of money on that. And again, we got the U6 on the back side here, which is the actual sensor for assuming pressure and liquid. Maybe they kind of go hand in hand. You can infer one from the other. All right, so now that we've taken it apart, let's see if we can get it back together and get it working again and um, see how successful we are at that. I'll do a second video where we'll do a couple current measurements on the batteries just to see how much juice this thing runs. And uh, we should be able to calculate out uh, a theoretical amount of runtime for the unit, uh, depending on how much, uh, how much of the time the pump is actually on. In uh, my experience, uh, with this pump in the particular way it was put on, um, it probably only ran for three or four seconds every hour or two uh, during the majority of the time. So that was pretty good. Uh, we'll just solder this right back on. So I just have to put that uh, yellow pusher stick on there to kind of hold the battery tab in place a little bit just because it wants to push down inside of the white casing behind it. So just how we get it to stay while I get it positioned here. And again, if you were in a factory and all the holes were clean and unsoldered, you wouldn't have those problems. But it looks like it fits perfect, so awesome. Okay, I'll uh, route these wires uh, to the inside channel there so we don't cut them in half when we're putting the case back together. Uh, arguably, these are the uh, most important parts of the entire unit. Uh, since it does drive the pump directly, but again, it kind of all operates as a package. So let's go ahead and uh, make sure the speaker will line up there. It should just hit on the uh, motherboard. Put the little uh, receptacle in that collects stuff. Actually, let's give it a, uh, before we put this hot lid on, let's um, turn this on. Such a small little button in there. We'll turn this on, get it working, make sure it runs. There the lights go. You see the green LED. Uh, gets the vacuum on, and my fingers over the, the tube. Just wait and see if anything happens. Ah, nothing. So yeah, working great seal. Everything's in good shape. Yep, there we go. That's kind of how it works. Uh, you get a little bit of air in under the wound dressing. Um, and then it runs. I'll go ahead and turn this off by holding it down. Well, I hope you found that interesting and uh, helpful. Uh, if you're laying in bed right now under various medication watching my videos and uh, just kind of wondering what this device is attached to you, um, hopefully you got something out of that. Um, it's kind of interesting myself to see it. Uh, disclaimer, uh, make sure that uh, you don't take any of this as medical advice. Always listen to your doctor. Don't listen to me. I just take stuff apart to see what's inside. And um, make sure to like and subscribe. Make sure to comment if you can. I really appreciate it. All right, look at that. It's back to running. Now, I would never use this after having taken it apart like this. Uh, but just kind of interesting that uh, I'm able to get it back to its original condition. So there it is, on and off. It detects when it's got a vacuum, turns the pump off, runs uber efficient. Uh, be sure to be on the lookout, so make sure to subscribe. Um, be on the lookout for my next video where I'll show you how I do current measurements of devices like this, and we'll calculate out kind of what the batteries um, are capable of doing. They obviously ran it for over a week, so we'll go from there. Thanks for watching.